Hey there everybody, Chris here, as usual. Oh, well, we are doing alright so far. Just letting everyone know that we that we're heading towards that dark town to destroy or oh, is up there, as people call as people call them as we speak. It's just somehow we got also a little bit of a maze here in this weird spatial matter. That I'm suddenly transported in. So we well, supposedly through a similar portal that Samael created. And well, even though he promised he would take us to the tower. Also, I've been seeing in some YouTubers that are still down in the dumps. And it's possibly by low subscribers and possibly these cyber bullies. So before we get started, and I just want to point out and say, no more depressions. Now I know there are there are bullies who are always in trolls out there, but we can just simply ignore those guys, and then things will be good. And don't worry about losing subs, as things will turn around soon enough. Uh, just give it time. So again, no more depressions, alright? Now that everyone's on the same page, I thought I'd try to kill time while we find out an entrance to that dark tower to discuss a little something that is kind of my favorite kind of topic. Something I like to call Understanding the Nephilim. Now, I did saw a young guy doing a biology about the merfolk, so I thought I'd we'll give it a try by discussing how the Nephilim are born and how they... How you say multiply? Now, to begin, in order to truly understand how the Nephilim are born and, and how they mate, well, it'll be best we go from the beginning. So as Cain says, Stay a while and listen. Now, according to Keynes' books, the a there are two entities that have been fighting, that have been fighting in the afterlives as we speak. Presumably calling the Eternal Conflict, the battle that has waged endlessly between angels and demons, and trust me, those battles can happen any time. I'm whether. Whether or not anyone's got caught in the crossfire. Now, in understanding then how those two differ and why are they they tend to destroy each other, let's have let's take a closer look at both angels and demons on both sides. Now, from my experience, there are some angels that have more human like features, for they for their son tend to keep their face faces hidden. The demons are, well, more, more or less monster-like. Quite possibly to be the stuff, be the stuff nightmares are made of. But there are some occasions that the two sides can, can have some, of um, certain degrees of humanoid. So yeah, even demons can have more or less of a humanoid feature. It just carries a lot of demon aspects with him. Finally, back to the conflict itself. Now, if the one example well, is in the world of Diablo. Is the angels and demons are fighting over control of the pandemonium as well as the world stone. Well, needless to say that this battle will continue, see, or possibly endlessly, if not for the two, not for the two body. And so are two sides. Inarius, who was who was Tyrion's former captain, and Lilith, who was the daughter of Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred. The two did steal heal the world stone from those two sides and brought them to sanctuary, so no one can use his power other than those two. Hence the creation of the world they call sanctuary. Now, I do hear some of you guys are saying, Angels and demons are enemies. They kill each other no matter who gets in their way. 
family, and they will never love each other. Well, in some, most cases, you are right. Nine times out of ten, and angels and demons will still try to kill each other. But there are very rare occasions, like Inarius and Lilith, have decided to fell in love with one another. Burying the hatchet of the eternal comfort that has been, been leaving those guys in blisters, and that ultimately leads the angels and demons falling in love with each other and decide to have children of their own, own in their own sanctuaries. So, as to how how their children are born, which in our case is Nephilim, there are some universes that have some dark configurations of how a Nephilim looks like. One such being would be more of a monster than a human being. Now, taking a close, close look at how, what these beings are, they are occasionally labeled as Nephilim with the I's instead of A and E. Now, I heard some people claiming that this is the actual result of what a Nephilim would look like, but in all honesty, I do digress. Because that is not how a Nephilim would look like, so I crossed that out. Now, why is true? The Nephilim, Nephilim has the, the capabilities of angel and demon and are, are brutal monsters. The four horsemen in their and their universe are more more or less civilized. For they do hold, hold the brutalities of a Nephilim. They do are enhanced, hence and understood, and understood the balance, hence putting an end and to the kin of Nephilim. Except the four, of course. Now, the actual, actual creature I'm referring to was the true Nephilim. Um, the beings that are more humanoid than the, than the Nephilim counterparts. Now, much like the Nephilim, they too had the abilities of angel and demon. You know, but unlike the Nephilim, the Nephilim has the powers of angels and demons to a highest degree possible. Possibly on a level of archdemon and highest archangels possible. Which kind of depends hence on the respective parents who are both angel and demon respectively. Now, in my opinion, the Nephilim are actually awesome. Now, to consider how the actual Nephilim was born, it says to actually come from two immortal spirits, one of angel and one of demon. But the sad part is, from what I've been seeing, the Nephilim were pretty much hated by by the other angels and demons who don't really care, who care only about the conflict who seek to battle so much on. And it's also f that the Nephilim also have, have good and evil battle inside them. So in order to surpass the two, and become the true Nephilim, they had to keep the two, the two sides in balance. Well, there, and there are some cases that there are some Nephilim that can be corrupted, either permanent or temporary, depending on the circumstances of the two parents. But so far, it's usually on when, when evil tries to take control of the Nephilim, but its corruption is too much, so it could result in being permanently damaged. But the corruption itself can be strong or weak, depending, depending on the circumstances. Again, again by the two who parents respe respectively. But I did find out that it turns out Alphanephon can also consume angel and demon blood, sort of like like a fuel supply for their strength. And they also possess and some very, very powerful abilities of angels and demons that can be used at a f at a highest degree. And now that leads us to another question: How does a nephilim multiply? 
Well, it does turn out that the Nephilim you know, might have more or less of a human-like feature. Okay, possibly some human, some human parts, and including, well, you know, what as for how, how the Nephilim's children are made, it's actually easy like, like all living beings do. The Nephilim, like yours truly, can simply find, find a mate, a, some, most cases, hum, a human being, and look, and let love do all the work. Now, once the Nephilim um, and his her mate are done uh, mating, it will result in children, children who will possess the DNAs of a Nephilim um, and most and a suitable mate. Now, say take take me as a true Nephilim, for example, and we are Gamatoi, who is a human life fiber hybrid as an example of a Nephilim's mate. Now after, now as I said, after the main process is done, and our children will bear in the DNAs of a ne of the Nephilim and, and, and his or her mate. And since my mate, who is my wife, who is also my wife, is a human, and, well in actuality, a human life fiber hybrid, the end result will be children who are angels slash demon slash human hybrid, kind of similar to how Nephilim does, except that they are not turned into monsters, but they have a lot of human human features along with all their parents and their ancestors' DNAs. Now as to how the children grow in how and the age of the Nephilim cells, they are kind of precise, kind of immortal pretty much immortal to aging, but there are certain cases that the Nephilim and their children can pretty much age rapidly, sometimes from an infant all the way to a teenage years in one year, but I don't say it is a possibility. I don't know if I, I was either doing hypothetical talk or fo found that out myself, but anyway, a life of a Nephilim is being forever despised by both angels and demons alike. But despite that, the Nephilim can still triumph over both sides, should they should both ever attack a Nephilim. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the Nephilim live and breathe to this day. Honestly, there's still pretty much to learn, and even I need to learn about how a Nephilim lives, is what abilities do the Nephilims truly have? But for now, I just had to stick with what I learned. Hey, Chris! Is, are you supposed to be hanging out to movie, movies with your mom tomorrow? If so, well, we're going to be ready. Hey, all right, call me Moxie and Millie. But anyway, if you guys do enjoy our, our little lesson about the Nephilim, be sure to give us a good like, and we shall see you in the next time. Um, stay safe, everybody.